So throughout the years of, you know, this YouTube channel and, you know, my career as a YouTuber or an influencer or whatever, I have seen a lot of uh, plugins. Um, it's one of the things that I do on my channel. I check out plugins to see if they work or not. And I get a lot of questions from people like, okay, but which plugins did actually end up in your toolbox, in your plugin list, in your whatever you wanna call it. So, so what I'm actually showing you guys is the package that I have. So I have a list of software and in there is a list of plugins that I need to have installed on the computer to be able to open every single session because I wanna be able to have compatibility on both my MacBook and my Mac Pro. And what I like to do is keep that list as simple as possible. So let's get started, let's take a look. So as the plugin host, as my DAW, I'm using Reaper. Reaper is very lightweight and um, it's super customizable. Cool thing is that I can link shortcuts to plugins and I can even put them on my, on my little stream deck. Let's walk through the list just on an alphabetical way or in the way it's sorted in here. Is this alphabetical? Oh, it's sorted alphabetically and uh, on the type of plugin because uh, I run VST and VST three. Okay, so at the top I have two plugins, uh, the Dynameter and the Loudness Penalty plugin, which Loudness Penalty I use on a daily basis and Dynameter I don't use a lot. Dynameter, it's it's a pretty interesting plugin. It's a very interesting way to visually show um, the loudness of your track. And, you know, in modern music production, loudness is very important. Now I'm not going to explain the whole plugin, but this is how it looks like. Now, loudness penalty is by standard uh, on my monitor FX bus. Now in Reaper, the monitor FX bus or the monitor FX thing, it's in the corner over here, is where you can put plugins that you wanna, you know, use during the monitoring. So on all the things that you're listening to, but don't wanna have uh, during bouncing. So for instance, Sonarworks uh, uh, goes on here. I don't use Sonarworks anymore, more on that later. But the only plugin that I have on there right now is the loudness penalty analyzer. And I can quickly, you know, check what my penalty in decibels would be when my track is being played back on different streaming services. So for this track that I'm running right now, I have a four and a half decibel, penalty on YouTube. Very cool thing is that you can uh, preview and auto gain in this plugin. Again, read the manual or watch my in-depth videos of this to know more about it. Now, next plugin that uh, I don't use a lot, but I might need to use more is OTT. This one is free from Extra Records, I think. Um, it's a free plugin and it's really great to pump up the volume of a track, uh, the loudness. I got this as a tip from a friend of mine, uh, Krein. I know he's watching, so hi. It's a great plugin, but I don't use it as much as I should. Now, next up is the round side machine. Now, you would think like, hey, is there a round side machine plugin? No, this is the control plugin uh, that actually controls uh, the real round side machine over there. And if, yeah, if I now turn the button over here, the button is also being turned over there with a like controlled potentiometer. Works over ethernet. And the cool thing is that if I'm still working in a session and I open that session and this plugin loads, the round side machine automatically resets itself to the position it was in uh, when I started working uh, on that session. And that's really cool. Now the next plugin is the sample grabber, which is for my analyzer. Now the sample grabber is in this list because I need to use it when I uh, use my analyzer on my laptop. Uh, on my Mac Pro, however, uh, my analyzer is listening directly to the outputs. So it's being routed back through the AVB signal. The analyzer that I use is the pure analyzer system. Uh, let me quickly show you this. Uh, it's a separated app, so it's not a plugin. And I always use it on, on this screen, on this setup. You have a lot of different layouts with a lot of different um, um, things to see. What I really like about this analyzer is, um, I call it the Christmas tree on the left where you can really see where all your frequencies are. Now for me, this is very handy because I'm using a lot of analog gear with stepless controls. So sometimes when I'm like boosting mid on the left channel and I wanna boost the same amount of mid on the right channel, I can get it of course by ear in the center, but I wanna be really precise. So I can check on the analyzer how precise I am. 
Uh, it's also handy for calibrating equipment. And I'm also watching a lot on here uh, if there's, for instance, enough low end in my production and that kind of stuff. It also has a, a loudness meter in here, um, which is very handy uh, if you want to measure luffs. Like remember the other one, the loudness penalty meter is uh, not measuring lifts, it's, it's measuring penalties. Of course, true peak RMS and uh, metering history. Metering history is very handy when you're working on albums. Then you can see if you're like close enough to your target. So next one are the Illusia Alpha Mix and the Illusia Alpha Master. I did buy this plugin in the big sale of Plugin Alliance or what was it? Anyway, it was on sale and of course, I buy it when it's on sale. Now they have a mix and a master plugin. This is the difference between the two. Um, on the mix plugin, you only get one side. I don't know how it works on stereo files. I, I almost never use the mix plugin. I use the master plugin a lot because I really like the character of the compression of the alpha compressor. And I would like to have a real one, but we all know the issue with that. So yeah, the alpha compressor is in my package now. Uh, and then we have, of course, the whole Fab Filter bundle. Uh, we have the compressor. Let me quickly show it. This one, I think we all know it. Um, we have the deasser, which I use a lot on vocals. The uh, the gate. I don't use the gate that often. Uh, what I like to do is sometimes uh, play a bit with expansion. How did I do that again? Um, by turning down the ratio like this, and then trying to expand the signal a bit. Uh, sometimes cool to do. Work on bass lines or something. Like you can really create something weird with it. Then we have the Pro L and the Pro L2. I have the Pro L installed for compatibility reasons for with my old sessions. Pro L2, of course, really cool. Has loudness metering, everything. I, I do not use a, a different limiter that often. Multiband. Compressor, of course, um, the ease of use of FAB filters, of course, uh, super great. And the Pro Q3. Now, I did review the Infinity Q by Slate. And um, after using it for a bit longer than the video was, uh, it feels like it's not completely done yet. Now, I don't know if it also could be because of the older software that I'm running on my system. I'm still on High Sierra over here. It uh, could be that that's one of the issues or that it's not fully compatible with Reaper yet. And also compared with the FAB filter, uh, there are some features missing. Um, for instance, uh, the dynamic EQing. Uh, the way that works in FAB filter is so easy that I sometimes use dynamic EQ. Although I am um, not a big fan of dynamic EQ because you could rather use a multiband. But in the end, it, it doesn't feel complete yet. And it's, it's really a feeling thing. And I'm going to try it again in like half a year. Uh, from now because I think then the development has been moved on a bit further. Uh, software development is not easy. Um, but for now I'm not using the Infinity EQ because there's literally no reason for me. Now I also have the Pro R from FabFilter, which I use uh, also pretty frequent. Of course the round side machine is a great reverb, but what the Pro R can do is, is so versatile and so freaky and crazy. You don't get that from the round side machine, of course. So for those crazy reverbs and also when I want to do like those, those weird reverbs with sidechain compression behind it and that stuff. I use the Pro R with that. Now what I also use is the Ozone 8 Suite. And the modules that I really like from the Ozone 8 are the, the multiband dynamics, the EQ, the maximizer of course, like these three are great on a master bus uh, together. The maximizer in the Ozone 8 can sometimes create certain sounds, certain ways of maximizing that the Pro L cannot create. So in those situations I use the maximizer. Maximizer is also very handy to use in combination with the Pro L2 if you really need to go loud. Then the imager of course, don't use it that often. I mean lately I'm more experimenting with uh, mid-side EQing than uh, with like imagers. Uh, and the exciter, and the exciter is pretty cool. It has a, a lot of cool excitement in here. And I really like the retro color, like on very commercial uh, vocals and that kind of stuff, you sometimes want a bit of that, that nasty distortion on there, the retro distortion in here. Now, the last thing in my list is of course the True Iron by Kazrock. Now, if you, if you watch my original video on the, on the True Iron, I was very impressed uh, and I wasn't expecting to be impressed. It's a very subtle effect, but it works very well. It really gives an analog feel to your tracks and I really recommend everybody to try out this plugin. Uh, although it doesn't have the best user interface, but 
then again, sound comes first and then interface comes second. If there would be anything else with this sound but a better interface, I would use that, of course. Now I hear you guys think like, hey, but what about the Saturn? Sorry, I forgot it. Um, it's a very complicated to make distortion, but it's not a very... Like, it's, it's very ver uh, versatile and a good interface, but it's not very quick. Like, I want to have some distortion over here, and you have to really model it in Saturn. So, uh, I don't use Saturn that often, but I do have it installed for those moments where I need, like, very custom distortion. Normally, when I want distortion, I use the tape machines or the character, the analog stuff. And that is, of course, also the reason why you don't see a lot of uh, plugins in my bundle. Um... I have a lot of analog gear and those are the main things that make the sound in my studio. Now the last thing that I've installed is not really a, a plugin, but I use it uh, from time to time. And it is the um, RX-7 audio editor. And what I use the RX-7 for is a noise reduction. Uh, sometimes there's noise in the production of my client and I try to sample a bit of noise and then reduce it with the RX-7. Sometimes there's noise coming from my equipment. Although that doesn't happen that often as you might think. Um, I'm really precise when it comes to gain levels and like using optimum gain levels for not having a lot of noise. Um, there's also a lot of other stuff in the uh, isotope which I rarely use but it's very great to have. Like, like it's, it's really a toolbox for audio repair. And um, you know sometimes you have a recording with some, some clicks in it and... Um, the declicker is very great. Like a few weeks ago, I had a song with some clipping audio files in it, which couldn't be recovered from my client side. So I used the declip module and recovered it from there. And with that, a lot of other stuff. And yeah, I think that that really is it. I don't use a lot of other stuff or almost no other stuff. I have some Reaper things, but maybe that's good for a different video if you guys are interested. And I'm still developing my Reaper setup. Like it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Now, plugins that you might expect to be in my bundle, but aren't in here, uh, is for instance, Sonarworks. Now, why don't I use Sonarworks anymore? Well, Sonarworks is still a great system to correct your room EQ, but I don't need it anymore because the speakers that I'm running right now are very advanced uh, prototypes for a system, which I can tell you more about when the time is there, but it's being run by a DSP uh, box and the correction now works in that DSP, so, so, so directly on the amplifier. And that is of course done by a professional with a, like a measurement microphone and like it's way more advanced and Sonarworks is, I think, a bit in the semi-pro level, semi-pro to pro level when it comes to uh, room correction. Like if you have the, like the super professional stuff, it's all done like on DSPs and like processing and that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm not using Sonarworks anymore because I don't need it anymore. But it doesn't say it's not a great system. I think it's one of the best systems to set up yourself and, you know, get to work with. It, it's almost a no headache sol solution. Now, another thing that you didn't see in my plugin list are plugins like I think Gulfos does it and um, Sutha and another Spectral. What is it? Spectral Dynamics, Spectral EQ, Spectral Correction. I don't use them because I don't believe in them. If there is something ringing in my sound, I cut it out with a small Q EQ band and that gives me full control over it. If you use such a plugin, and even if you have ringing, it might be easy to use such a plugin, you might think that, but you, you like adjust the threshold to somewhere and it all of a sudden also starts to correct other things which you don't wanna have corrected. And I don't understand why you wanna like flatten your frequency response. I do not understand it. You ch take away the character of certain instruments and you just make, make it very mushy. It's just, I'm not missing it. And it's, it's a technique that is now possible with uh, recent like computers and um, processing power. But the best records are not being made with these type of plugins on a channel or on the master bus. So that's the reason why I don't have like those spectral repair, whatever it is, uh, plugins. Now, with that being said, I want to end this video over here. Leave a comment down below and let me know what type of plugins you use or what, what you were really missing in my chain. Because maybe there's something cool out there that I should use as well. Now, also down below, you find the subscribe button, um, which you can click to support me. 
Uh, another way to support me is by pledging a bit to my Patreon campaign, which I'll link over here. I'm working on the vlogs on there, so, uh, so check it out. Another way to support me is by watching more of my videos. I'll link one of them over here. Thanks a lot for watching, keep pushing, and bye bye.